Hi, this is Catherine. This is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is Best of British from Hardy and Sons. It's related somehow to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I'm not sure exactly how. I got it there at some point, I think. <laughs> it's been a while, so I really am bringing myself to drink a lot of the teas that I've had for a while, especially because I did get a few new teas when I was in London. So yeah, time to use what I have. It's like a black tea blend, I think. Haven't had it in a while, so a little clueless. On that note, I thought the name of it would just be apropos, 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 can never say that word, um, because I am showing you more books that I bought in Britain. Well, actually, much more specifically London, but that's okay because it is British, technically. So, um, and I think that most of these books are, not all, but many of these books have some kind of Britishy or English uh, vibe to them, or historical significance or something, and other things too. I love it all, of course, because otherwise why would I buy it? One would think. Also, these are, this is part two of my haul from my trip to London. This is also nonfiction, and if you see any of these books and say, man, you need to read this right away, Catherine, like this looks so amazing, you need to read read it right away. That would be actually kind of helpful for me because I am still trying to get together my nonfiction November uh, TBR and I just have so many and I mean of all things to complain about is having too much to choose from. I mean but still it is still a bit of a conundrum because I would like to pick out a few solid uh, books to put on my TBR and I am all over the place right now. So any little bit of help would be much, much, most welcome. Welcome, either way. So, I'm going to, let's see, I'm going to start, let's see, yes, with the two books that are the least uh, related to Britain, even though they are still related. Um, I think this writer is British. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he is Martin Latham. Sounds, but I, I haven't really read much of it, so I don't quite remember. But let's assume, let's assume, because um, it just looks kind of like it would be. Um, and this is a book about books. I love that. It's one of my favorite uh, types of books. I don't know if you can call it genre, but close enough. And this is The Bookseller's Tale by Martin Latham. So it's a really cool picture. It is, uh, it has Virginia Woolf on it. It has a cat. It has a floofy cat. That makes me happy. And various other characters who I could probably identify if I really pay attention, but they're all amongst books, which is a happy thing for me. Lighting just got weird. Um, sorry about that. So it's uh, it's about loving books. And especially, I believe, from what I read when I was, I'm going to cover the cat, um, when I was starting it, because uh, I read a little bit on the plane. I just didn't have any energy. I don't know what it is on planes. It's really hard for me to read. I'm just so tired. And I can't sleep. I do not like flying. I'm not afraid of it. I just do not like it. Um, I have a healthy respect for it, though. Anyway, um, what are you saying? It's also about physical books and love for those, which for me is very strong. I This year, I think I've upped my uh, digital reading a little bit, and that's because my apps have been working out for, like, uh, my phone and my, and my tablet, so I can do a little more e-reading. But, and in a way it's good because there are some books that I have read for uh, group reads, you know, book club or book group reads of some sort, or buddy reads, that I couldn't find elsewhere or I couldn't find for a good price elsewhere. And I said, well, you know what, instead of going crazy sourcing it and spending all kinds of money, and what I had to add, I couldn't find it from my local libraries. Weird that I have the New York Public Library system at my fingertips and they lack so many books. I can't even, I do not understand that at all. But anyway, this is a nice tea. There's another flavor and I forgot what it is. Something floral probably, I think. My mouth is playing tricks on me. Oh, it's a good thing I'm not a tea taster today. Um, where was, oh yes. So I do like reading eBooks and I do like the accessibility of them for those reasons. Uh, but I also don't really like, um, I don't prefer reading from ebooks or even audiobooks 
even though at some point they'll probably become more uh, vital for me, who knows? But at the moment, I really do like holding a physical book, smelling it. I know, cliche, but I love the smell of books. So any book that talks about that, very excited to pick up. And uh, the next book is also not British, but this painting is in the National Gallery. Sorry, my nose is itchy. National, <laughs> that's very attractive, right? National Gallery in London. And uh, so it is related still, kind of. Uh, the thing is, when I was younger um, and would have conversations with my dad about art, almost every time the discussion went to art, um, he would talk about one painting that he always wanted to see in person, but probably never would because it was in London. And he had, I guess he had gone to a history of art class when he was briefly in college and the book uh, had this painting as one of his pictures and he just found it fascinating. And so he always said, if you ever get to this museum, please look for it. I did, I found it, I was really excited to see it just because it was my dad's favorite or one of his favorite paintings. And I also bought a print of it um, there. It's, you can't see up here, but up, up, up above, um, I still have it because I got it after my father died, obviously. And I also have a print of Reichenbach Falls because I love Sherlock Holmes and am a nerd. And, um, but I haven't ever had it framed. It's just in its old, you know, its first form when you buy it, it has that like white cardboard. So maybe one day I'll actually do something about that. But until then, I still find it, I still find the painting interesting. And I do honestly have a sentimental feeling, not just because it's an interesting painting, but because it reminds me of my dad, you know, and I miss him. So uh, this, when I saw this book in Hatchard's, beautiful, beautiful bookshop, I can't say enough about it. Um, I said, okay, Girl in a Green Gown, The History and Mystery of the Arnold Feeney Portrait by Carola, I think, or Carola. Can't be Carola, right? Toyota Carola? Carola? I'm not mocking. Hicks. Either way, this person wrote this book. Um, and uh, yeah, I I just love this painting. I'm sorry. I'm not, I, I have watched programs about, or YouTube videos, etc. about about this painting. And you know, there was always like, is she, is she pregnant? Is she not pregnant? And so people say all kinds of different things. I love the color. I just, you know, green is definitely my favorite color, although I also love purple. I think that's kind of obvious too. But um, I love that color dress. I would love to have a lot more in my wardrobe of that color. Um, she also, it's, it's interesting. She's got a green dress, but it looks like her sleeves look kind of bluish. And then of course, I mean, well, this guy kind of looks like Putin. So that always makes people, uh, it's been a subject of memes. And, um, and in the background, there's a mirror and you could actually see a lot of things in the mirror detailing the artist etc Derek and that's, I, I had to learn how to pronounce that I have such a difficulty with like Dutch type of names um, I mean no one really says Van Gogh correctly uh, Americans say it kind of as the French pronounced it and the British say Van Gogh but I asked I asked a person from I think Amsterdam and they said there it's pronounced Van Gogh or something Van Gogh something I don't know and it was, it was just, okay, so we're never gonna get exactly correctly. There is a siren. Um, it is the, it is the pronouncing uh, names wrong police because I have just done like probably about two infractions. <laughs> now I think it's actually a fire truck. I hope everything's okay. I hate to feel so inconvenienced by a fire truck, but anyway, so it's the history and mystery of the Arnold Feeney portrait. Um, painted in 1434 um, and it's a portrait of a wealthy Bruges merchant and his wife and yes it says here that intrigues all who see it it's true I don't know what it is about this one and I know um, when I was uh, recently reading about pre-Raphaelites I haven't talked about that book that I read I haven't done a wrap-up of September yet I am really behind in a lot of things anyway when I read that I um I think there was a mention of this particular artist and even this painting as one of the influences. So that even goes along with my continuing project about pre-Raphaelites. And um, oh, so there's a doggy at the bottom. Look at that, oh, little doggy. Anyway, so we had a picture with a kitty cat and now we have a doggy. It is a menagerie. So the next one, first of all, I love this 
these um, spines. I saw a number of them in bookshops, especially. I saw a lot of them in um, foils. And I just love it. I like penguin orange. It's really cool. But um, but they had a number of nonfiction books. And this one just, I thought was interesting. To the Ends of the Earth, Scotland's Global Diaspora, 1750 to 2010. So comes pretty recently, 2010, right? But um, I just find the history of immigration, emigration, I guess you would say, interesting anyway. Um, growing up, you know, in the United States, obviously, um, that is such a story. Um, the first thing people ask you, not, oh, not the first thing, but like when I was growing up, the first thing a lot of kids would ask me was where I was from. And I was always like, I'm from, I'm from the, you know, I'm from here. Where are you from? And like, where are your parents from? Where were their parents from? And of course, when I would do that, the most recent immigrant in my family um, was my grandfather, who came, well, first, more recently from Canada, but before that from Scotland. And so even though probably because of age differences and everything, probably when he emigrated, it was probably around the same time as my Italian family. Even so, like just in terms of near relatives, that's the closest one. So I always found, I think that specifically interesting uh, where people from Scotland went when they left Scotland and um, they went all over the place. And uh, obviously one of the major places they went to was besides the United States, Canada. So um, I'm sure that will be included here. I think probably all parts of the world, Africa, you know, um, New Zealand, etc. cetera. So, um, uh, so this says in the back, the Scots are one of the world's greatest nations of emigrants. For centuries, untold numbers of men, women, and children sought their fortunes in every part of the globe, from the British Empire to the United States, in cities and on prairie farms, as traders, bankers, missionaries, soldiers, politicians, and engineers. So you name it. To the ends of the earth puts this extraordinary epic center stage in Scottish history, cutting through myth and sentiment surrounding, yeah, sentiment, uh, surrounding stories such as the Highland Clearances and the Enlightenment to show the true impact of Scottish emigration on the world and on the nation it left behind. So that should be interesting. I should read that at some point. I actually wanted to read more about Scottish history in general. I don't read as much as you would think. Usually when I do, it's in relation to British history, like English history. Um, like for instance, when I was reading about Henry VIII and his sister married the King of Scotland. So of course there was Scottish history entwined or intertwined in there. So yeah, that, that's an interesting subject to me anyway. Um, and this one says exclusive content on it. So I don't know what that means, but um, I, I just kept seeing this in the bookshop. So I did get it and I don't regret it. This is by Ben Robinson and it's called England's Villages, An Extraordinary Journey Through Time. So we have to do a little time travel while we're at it. Um, still haven't talked about the newest episode of Doctor Who, kind of a big deal. Um, but anyway, um, but I won't talk about it here in case you haven't watched it yet. Spoilers and all that, although it's a little later now. Um, so this is just about English villages. And I, though I usually, when I go to England, I spend almost all the time or most of the time in London. I do like the thought of the English villages and there's, they, each of them have their own personality and charm and sometimes negative aspects too. I mean, some places aren't as welcoming as others. So I think that is a great subject and I want to know what the exclusive content is, but it's got all kinds of pictures. I mean, I love, everybody loves usually, not everybody, but a lot of people love the pictures of like the English countryside and different village life. And I already just cracked this vine just now. Wah, wah. But that's okay, it was gonna happen anyway. So at least I did it, you know, after I took it home. And yes, I'm excited to read about this one as well. Um, I know nothing about Ben Robinson. I'll bet I'll bet he's someone that other people in like Britain know or something. Um, and I don't see like an immediate. Oh, he's a British archaeologist and television presenter. So yeah, I feel like he's probably known on television in England, but who knows? So last but not least, this is my other um, hardcover because the other one I bought was from the last video, the Bryant and May Peculiar Crimes uh, book, and I. You know, I mostly focus on getting paperback just because they're easy. Well, they cost less and they're easier to tote. And, but when I saw this one, okay, I'm just going to preface this by saying that when I go 
to England or to any kind of Britishy or Irishy restaurants, one of my favorite things to eat is something I really, really, really shouldn't eat, which is like the full English breakfast or the full Irish breakfast. I mean, there's some parts of it that I don't like anyway, but just the parts that I do like are so, I mean, they call it a heart attack on the plate. I sadly struggle with cholesterol, high cholesterol, and I, um, which is just fun because all of the best foods, <laughs> besides maybe oatmeal, all the best foods in the planet have high cholesterol. At least I say best foods, the things that I like and I crave, and <sighs> it is a nightmare to try to keep you know, a uh, uh, good diet, you know? So I do not normally eat the ingredients of, of a typical English, full English breakfast. And I don't think most British people eat that on a daily basis because they also need to keep a semblance of health, right? But, oh, it is so tasty. And often I can enjoy it when I know I won't be eating for a while. So I had, I had my mine on a day that we were going to do a bit of walking and it took a while before we had, um, I don't even remember if we had lunch or if we just had a snack either way, <laughs> you know, so it really, it really held us for a while, but still, and I'm not, you know, trying to knock it. It's just so, so much, but I saw this book and it got me really excited by Felicity Cloak, Cloak, I'm assuming, Red Sauce, Brown Sauce, a British breakfast odyssey. And I also like brown sauce. I can find it here because there's like Irish uh, groceries in my area. Um, I am quite uh, happy to live in an area that has grocery and restaurants from all over the place. But, um, but I, yeah, so I just saw this picture and I was like, I can't wait. I can't wait to read this. Um, and so I will read the description because it's cool. We all have an opinion. Oh, this feels nice. We all have an opinion on the merits of brown sauce versus ketchup on our morning bake of sarning, bake, bacon sarning. We all don't because a lot of people are not from Britain, but I guess who's reading this probably mostly. Determined to get to the bottom of our obsession, the nation's favorite taster in chief, Felicity Cloak, see, I don't even know who she is. That's sad. Um, sets off on a cycle trip, something I can't do, of condimental proportions to investigate and celebrate the legendary great British breakfast. Traveling the length and breadth of the U.S. to of the U.S., U.K. Maybe I should just not read out loud. <laughs> of the U.K. to establish once and for all what makes a perfect fry-up. She rates them on criteria from the crispness, crispness of the bacon to how long they keep her pedaling. Yeah. But a woman cannot live on all-day breakfast alone. So as well as providing recipes for the Savoy's omelette Arn Arnold Bennett and proper Scottish porridge. Oh, that's actually good porridge then. She lavishes her attention on the regional specialties she encounters along the way. From a Desi, Desi breakfast, that is Indian, um, in Birmingham, to a Greg's Geordie Stati cake. If I pronounce any of this correctly, I need a medal. This is a freewheeling gastronomical tour like no other. So, yeah. Um, and I also do like stories of people taking cycling trips. Uh, just took off the cover for a moment because I wanted to show you the interior and papers and look how pretty that is. It's got cups of tea. It's got a big bed on the bottom and other bits of Britain. I see a lighthouse. I should know where that is. It's got a picture of honey, porridge, oat cakes, uh, marmalade. I do like marmalade a lot too. Isn't that beautiful? I would love to just have that and hang that on my wall. But I will not. I will just enjoy it in the book. So that is the rest of my nonfiction books that I purchased from the UK, from London. And next time I do a haul, it shall be the fiction, the novels, etc. Um, that I got. Although the first part one, I think, did also have some, some fiction as well. So it's not strictly. But either way, uh, yeah. So I will have some novels to share with you guys. And that will be really exciting, at least for me. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think of these books, which ones you think I should tackle first, and which ones you would really like to get if you have a chance. If you are from not from Britain and you've never heard of some of these books, so I hope I've helped you to, well, maybe not helped, but you know, guided you to more books to be aware of if these subjects are appealing to you. Because sometimes, you know, 
it's hard to find otherwise. I mean, you could look online, etc. But you know. So anyway, on that note, this is Catherine, a taking tea with Catherine. Have a lovely tea and bookville day.